Hallelujah. <laughs> we are back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on back in, everybody. I'm about to reshare the broadcast myself. Hallelujah. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we are persevering. Come on in, come on in, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on in, reshare this broadcast. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Lord, we thank you. Come on in. Open up the heavens, oh God. Come on in, everybody. We apologize for the technical issue, but we are back and better than ever. There we go. Yep, if you see somebody that's not back on the live, send them a, an invite and tell them we are back and we are in full effect. Lord, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God. Come on in. We got a powerful, powerful message for you today. Hallelujah. Come on back. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on in, everybody. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Come on in, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday night Bible study. I'm thinking of Wednesday night prayer because <laughs> of this music. This music is just, ah, this is some of my warfare music. Man, I've seen God do some amazing things. But we are back and we are better than ever. I want you guys to get your pens, your papers. I want you guys to share the broadcast. Hallelujah. You all are in for a treat. I'm telling you, we are in such a beautiful season. I mean, Yom Kippur, God released a blessing yesterday, and I'm telling you, it really hit me today. When I was at work, I just felt like my help come, and I'm like, wow. And so I'm very excited for what the Lord is about to do today. Each Tuesday, if you've never, if this is your first time being with us on a Tuesday, get ready to take notes. Get ready for a paradigm shift. Get ready for God to do something new in your life. Get ready for God to throw away all the old stuff. I'm telling you, over here, Tuesdays is trash day. We take all the trash out physically. And spiritually, I think God wants to, you to empty out all your stinking thinking today as well. And so I'm telling you, he's about to release. Mm, he's about to release some things to you. Hallelujah. So I want you guys to come in. Hallelujah. Minister April says you can only watch on the big screen. That's still kind of sweet because I don't even know how to do that yet. Um, so I don't know if that's a negative thing, a bad thing or not. It, feels, it sounds like a good thing. You see us in, uh, in full effect. But I'm telling you, I'm so excited for us to get back into the church very soon. Things are just getting in place and there's such a massive testimony behind it. And I'm telling you, every day I, I get more and more excited to get back into the house of the Lord. And so I want you guys to get on in here. Man, I want you guys to bring your expectancy. I'm telling you, the Lord is about to release some amazing things to us today. And so you know that Dr. J likes to exegete the word of God, precept upon precept. So I want you guys to get your pens, your paper, your notepads, your, your, uh, your iPads, your electronics, however you want to actually take these notes. Because I'm telling you, I feel the spirit of the living God right now. And he's about to release some things. I'm telling you, even earlier today, I, I was interpreting some dreams and God was giving me insight. So I'm telling you, it's a season of revelation. It's a season of insight. It's a season of transformation. Amen. There's some things coming down the line that we don't know. 
We don't know what's going to happen. But I do I do know one thing that if we walk and we apply everything the word says, we're going to be OK. Nothing is a surprise for God, but God has given us instructions, especially today, rightly dividing the word. That's what that's what the man of God is going to preach on today. I'm telling you, it's going to cause you to be able to, to learn how to take scripture and use it here. Scripture and use it there to better your life in this area. You know what I'm saying? It's going to help you to to not be fooled by false doctrine. Because it says in the end times, false false prophets will arise. False everything is going to arise. And so you don't want to be false. You don't want to be deceived. You don't want a delusion to fall upon your mind. You want to have the sword, which is the word of God, for your arsenal. So God has given you weaponry today. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray. Man, I feel, I feel your presence, God. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you will release an understanding, oh God, that you will destroy all distractions, Lord. So everyone that's listening and that's participating, oh God, to your word today, Father, will be better because of it, oh God. Teach us how to, how to, how to fight the good fight of faith, oh God. Let us not be fearful. Let us not look to the left and look to the right. We tell us to look straight and just charge. Father, help us, oh God. Help our hands and teach our hands to, to fight to war, oh God. The way you desire for us to do it, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, I pray, God, for peace. No distractions, oh God. Let our minds perceive your word and let our hearts be fertile ground to receive it. We desire our harvest, oh God, and manifestation of your promises today. Like never before, Lord. Father, I pray for your fire to fall upon this broadcast. In the name of Jesus. Let it fall. Let it fall in great measure. Let it fall with massive weight, oh God. And let it burn up old ways of thinking, oh God. And let boldness arise, Lord. Let boldness arise like never before, Lord. For the persecution shall arise. But we shall arise with it with all boldness like the disciples. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, we give you all the praise and honor. I just feel such a special glory upon this word tonight, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for all the revelation, all the mystery, all the unveiling of secrets, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we decree your kingdom over the airways right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. So at this time, I hope you are ready because I know I am. The one and only Dr. J. C. Gregory. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You know what? We had a little te technical difficulty, and I believe that was the Holy Spirit allowing you to go get your pencil, your ink pen, or whatever you're going to use to write, a pad, because, you know, we're talking about rightly dividing the word. And if you're going to rightly divide it, you're going to have to study it. You have to get involved in it. You know, we, we're talking about giving God the preeminence, making him first, making the word of God first. Amen. And so, you know, if you haven't found out yet, look around. We're living in the last days. And Jesus has a lot to say about the last days, about false prophets rising up, people get uh, departing from their faith, giving heed to seducing spirit. And he says, if it was, and I'm going to get into it later, I'm going to give you the scripture, but he said, if it were possible, the very elect could be deceived. And the reason why the very elect is not going to be deceived, because they get into the word, they allow the word to get into them. Did you get that? Not only did they get into the word, but they allowed the word to get into them. See, a lot of people can mentally assent to the word and they know a lot of word but how much word knows them and that's you know that has to be our goal the word has to come inside of us take up residence because that's what it said about jesus the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glory as only the begotten son of god amen so um we're talking about rightly 
dividing the word. You know, just by that title, it means that you can incorrectly do it. Because, you know, God tells us to rightly divide it. You know, study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need him not be ashamed, rightly dividing, which means that you can, you can wrongly divide it or incorrectly divide it. And so we have to look at scriptures, and not only do we have to read it, we have to meditate on it, and then allow the Holy Spirit to give us the revelation on it, a deeper understanding. Amen. So God blesses us because we have knowledge and understanding of his kingdom. You know, we, let's get a couple of th things straight. You know, because people say, well, God loves me. Well, God loved the whole world. He, lo he loves the whole world, but the whole world is not going to have eternal life and a blessed life until they submit to the things of God. Amen. So God blesses us because we have knowledge and understanding of his kingdom and have submitted. Now get this, because we have submitted our lives to the quest of operating within the parameters of the kingdom. Did you get that? God blesses us because we have submitted. Sub means under. Amen. So we, we're getting under the word. We're allowing the word to become flesh. And it now uh, governs our lifestyle. You know, I've often said that Christianity is embracing a new value system. You know, if you're still living according to the old values that you had before you got saved, there's probably a good question that you really have not made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. And so that's what I'm here to do. You know, as an educator, as a teacher, I want to help you uh, rightly divide the word of truth. Hosea 4, 6 says, and this should never, this should never be there. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Why? Because they have rejected it. You know, sometimes uh, the Holy Ghost tries to lead us to get into the word, to make a decision in, in harmony or consistent with the things of God, and we reject it. So uh, Hosea 6, 4, 6 back in the Old Testament says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. And God says, if you reject me, I'm going to reject you and your children. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you, the priestly nation. See, we're supposed to be priestly nation. What, what's, what's, what does a priest do? Because Paul talks about it in Romans chapter 1. A priest goes to God on behalf of the people. And then he goes to the people on behalf of God. So he's like a, he's a mediator. He stands bef between God and the people, and he'll, he makes the people's petitions to God, and then he takes God's petitions to the people. And so God says we, we, he would reject us if we refuse to govern our life by the principles of the knowledge that's been revealed to us through the Bible. Amen. Hebrews, listen, I'm going to give you a lot of scripture, and I want you to, to, to write this down, and I want you to look at it in context. I'm just going to give you a little bit, but I'm going to give you enough to springboard into a good study for yourself. Because the Bible tells us to study yourself so you can be approved unto God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 and 3, I'm going to kind of run them together. But it says, how shall we escape if we neglect and refuse to pay attention and let the promises of God slip away? So, you know, if, if something slips away, that means you don't have it. Did you get that? You know, Hebrews is telling us that we can't allow the things of God to slip away. That means if it slipped away, I don't have it. We have it rightly divided. We've got to, you know, Paul told Timothy, you have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to lay hold of eternal life. So when it tries to slip away, you have to grab it. That's when, when God gives you a revelation, you need to hold on to it. You need to meditate on it. You need to talk about it. Amen. You need to confess it. You, you, you know, we have to think right. We have to talk right. We have to live right. 
We need to be conformed to the image of Christ in thought, purpose, and action. But that doesn't happen until you get a mirror of what Jesus is like. Or, because Jesus is the Word. That's why we have to study the Word. Because when we study the Word, we're studying Jesus. Amen. Listen, John 8, 32. Write that down. John chapter 8, verse 32. It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know, recognize, have understanding of, have relationship with, that you walk in, submit to, will make you free. Did you get that? The truth that you have a relationship with makes you free. Not just mentally assenting to it, but you have to have a relationship. And we're going to show you people who try to operate and kingdom mandates without a relationship with the Lord. First uh, Timothy chapter four. I'm giving you a lot of scripture. You need to write this down because we're talking about rightly dividing the word. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. But the Holy Spirit, I'm in the Amplified, uh, not, not the classic, but the update Amplified. It says, but the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in the latter times, that's talking about now, because we're in the latter times. In the latter times, some will turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons, misled by the hypocrisy of liars whose conscience are seared as with a branding iron, leaving them incapable of ethical functioning. Did you hear that? Amen. That was, that was um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 in the Amplified. Now let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, study and be eager to do your utmost to present yourself to God. Did you get that? Hallelujah. It says, study and be eager. Be eager. Don't, don't look at it like, oh, man, I got to study the Bible. It's mundane. No, you have to be study. You have to have a good attitude. If you be willing and obedient, Isaiah 119 says, you shall eat the good of the lamb. The, so you should have a good attitude because, you know, Jesus, I told you a couple of weeks ago, Jesus says it's daddy's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But you have to read the will to see what he, the will of the Lord is. Because the, the Old Testament, New Testament is really the old will and the new will. The New Testament is the updated will. But you have to read the Bible to see what the will of the Lord is and what he will to us. Because the Bible says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So once again, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study, be eager, and do your utmost to present yourself to God. That sounds like Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present here once again. He's, he's talking about present your body. You know, you have to stop doing this, that, and the other and start studying the word so you can rightly divide it. And you know the difference between what the devil's trying to do and what God's mandate is. Amen. It goes on to say to present yourself to God, approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately, accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. You know, once again, there's a couple of buzzwords. If the Bible's uh, encouraging us to accurately pursue it and accurately divide it, that means that we could incorrectly or not accurately do it. See, sometimes we not only do we have to hear what the Bible's saying, we have to hear what it's not saying. Amen. Too many people think they have something when they don't. Did you get that? Too many people think they have something when they don't. So many people can quote promises and violate the principles and the processes. Get that. They can quote promises, but they violate 
the principles and the processes that make the promises of God become a reality and a manifestation. Why? Because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. This is what Jesus says in Matthew 7, 15. Write these scriptures down because I want you to go back and look at them in the context. You know, read the whole chapter. You know, too many of y'all waiting on the, the, the movie to come out. Read the Bible. <laughs> Amen. It says, Jesus says, beware of false prophets. Why? Because they have false doctrine. They have false teaching. And, and the only way to overcome that is we get into the word. Listen what, Ma listen what Matthew 24, 24 says. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. So just because a person can do signs and wonders don't mean they're from God. I mean, you can go back to no, uh, Moses' day when God told him to throw down his rod. It turned into a serpent. And Pharaoh said, that ain't nothing. My magicians can do that. And they threw down their rods and they turned into serpents too. But we know Moses' serpent ate up Pharaoh's magician's serpent. All I'm saying is that the devil can do signs and wonders too. So that's no indicator that that's from God. If it's not consistent with the, with, with the purpose of God, the mindset of God, the attitude of God, the love of God, it's probably not God. Matthew 24, 24 says there's going to be some false Christ, false prophets, and, and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, God's chosen one. If it were possible, but we know it's not going to be possible because we are wordsmiths. Amen. We love the word. The, you know, God created the world with the word. You know, Hebrews 11, 3 says, uh, by faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. So listen, if God framed the world with the word, we certainly can furnish it with the word. Did you get that? God was showing us that he framed everything with the word and it's up to us because he gave the planet to us. We have to furnish it with the word. Amen. Listen, John chapter eight, verse 32 says, you shall know the truth. See, it's incumbent upon us to know the truth because we study the word of truth. Amen. The Bible is the word of truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth you recognize, have relationship with, or have experience with, or the truth that's gained through familiarity, gained through experience, because you walk with God, makes you free. The truth you allow to direct your life will make you free. Amen? Now I want to go to another scripture. I'm told you, listen, I hope you got your coffee, because we're going through some scriptures tonight, because this is Bible study. Amen. We're not doing a drive by the night. We're going to dwell with the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place, not drive by. If my word abide in you and you abide in my word, then you can ask what you want. This is not a drive by night. This is a taking up a dwelling in a residence. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses one and two. Therefore, since we do hold and engage in this ministry by the mercy of God. See, here we go again with that mercy of God. Sounds like uh, Romans 12, 1 again. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. You know, in light of all that God has given us, is it too much to ask you to study your word? You know, and God has helped us. He has shut down everything. Some things are coming back slowly. But he's given us a time where we can reprieve and refocus, reset, rededicate. Re means go back and do it again and do it correctly. Re-examine re ourselves and restudy the word. Amen. Renew our minds. Retrain our minds. So this is a season. And this pandemic is not going to last forever. 
you know, God has been so good. Some of y'all ain't, haven't gone back to work and you're still getting unemployment. In fact, when they called you back, you said no because you're getting so much unemployment. <laughs> Amen. So at least let's, let's uh, show him some reverence by getting back in the word. Because I'm going to tell you, the Bible, we just read that the, the, uh, the false prophets are going to rise up and they're going to do signs and wonders. And so, you know, we can't get caught up with every signs and wonder. Now, I'm going to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 again, verse 1. Therefore, since we do hold and engage in this ministry by the mercy of God, granting us favor, benefits, opportunities, and especially salvation. And that's and since God saved you, we do not get discouraged, spiritless, despondent with fear, or become faint with weariness and exhaustion. You know, some of y'all, I, you know, I've heard people complain about being tired. Well, you shouldn't be tired now because you only have to go to work. And if you're going to work, all you're doing is leaving your bedroom and going downstairs and you're working from home. So God has given the time to, to re-energize ourselves. Amen. Verse 2 says, now this is important. If you're a believer and once you get a, a mandate from, from the Lord, once you get revelation on how you should govern your life according to how the word dictates, it says we have renounced disgraceful ways. Did you get that? The Bible says we have renounced disgraceful ways, secret thoughts, secret feelings, secret desires, and underhandedness. The methods and arts that men hide through shame. We refuse to deal. This is what Paul is saying. We refuse to deal craftily to practice trickery and cunning. Which means, listen, there's people that do that. There's ministers who are tricky and that cunning and practice stuff to deceive and, and, and fleece the sheep. But if you rightly divide the word, you can feel like, I, I, I get to get out of this place because he's not right. This, this place is not right. And that's what God is saying. Listen, there's going to be prophets that rise up, but I didn't send them. Did you get that? There's going to be false teachers, false doctrine, false prophets, because there's the real ones. And God wants you to study the word so that when you so you can discern and dif differentiate between what's right, what's real, and what's false. Amen? So he says, uh, we, don't, we don't practice trickery. And we don't practice being cunning. And we don't adulterate or handle dishonestly the word of God, which means you can. And I've seen preachers do it. Mm -mm -mm. But we state the truth openly, candidly, Clearly, and so we commend ourselves in the sight and presence and presence of God to every man's conscience. Did you get that? As a Second Corinthians chapter four, verses one and two. Now go to Acts chapter nineteen. I tell you, we're gonna study the word. We're dwelling in the word tonight. We're, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen, God wants to protect us in these last and evil days. Satan knows that his time is coming to an end, so he's throwing everything at us that he can. And so, listen, uh, Revel I mean, Matthew eleven twelve says the kingdom, since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, but the violent take it by force, which means that I'm making myself get into the word. I'm making myself pray. Amen. I'm making myself love. I'm making myself forgive. Amen. I'm going to make myself do right. And then the Holy Spirit is going to assist me. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even in our faith. Amen. We believe we can do it. Acts chapter 19. I'm giving a lot of word. Now listen, whatever you go, I hope you put your, your, your DVR and don't run it out of here tonight because you need to hear this because if it were possible, the very elect could be deceived, but they're not going to be deceived because they get in the word, they study the word, and they rightly divide the word. Amen. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 
God was doing extraordinary and unusual. I'm in the amplifier, the updated one, not the classified. God was doing extraordinary and unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. See, Paul was legitimate, but we're going to see there's some people that are not legitimate. See, that's what we're talking about. The devil is not legitimate. Even though he has power, his power is from the dark side. It's unauthorized and it's not legit. He's not been authorized by God. Jesus has. The church has. Those born again have. But the devil is copycatting our abilities. Did you get that? God was doing extraordinary and unusual miracles by the hand of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or face towels or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick and their diseases left them and the evil spirits. Once again, when you take that word evil and put a D in front, it means devil. So these evil spirits is something that the devil caused to happen. Amen. You know, uh, Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all those that were what? Oppressed of the devil. So sickness, disease, and sin comes from the devil. But if you give yourself to the Lord, make him the head of your life, give him the preeminence over your life, study the word, meditate on it, desire to walk in it, you will have victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, uh, even the evil spirits came out of them. Verse 13 says, then now get this, then some of the traveling Jewish exorcists who attempted to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. See, the devil wants to copycat. These are false prophets. They said this, I implore you and solemnly command you by the Jesus. <laughs> I laugh at this. I, am, <laughs> I adjure you. I implore you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. See, they listen, there's people that know about Jesus but don't know him. Did you get that? They have a mental assent about Jesus. They know about him, but they don't know him. What, that, what does that mean? They don't have a personal relationship with the Lord. You can't be going around here and trying to act like you got all this together and you can do what but we do because we've been authorized because we're part of the kingdom. We're, ki we're king's kids. Amen. So the devil's going to try to imitate it. First of all, he's going to try to tell you you don't have it, and then he's going to try to duplicate it, and he hasn't been authorized to do it. <laughs> so this is funny. They knew about Jesus but didn't have a personal relationship. Verse 7, 14 says, I'm in Acts 19, verse 14. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. But the evil spirit retorted. What does that mean? The evil spirit spoke up through the man <laughs> in which the evil spirit was in. It talked back to him. It, and this is what the evil spirit says. I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus, and I know about Paul. Did you get that? But as for you, who are you? And so we have to be careful of these false people who try to go around and, and act like they got it and they don't have it. And let's look, listen what happened. Verse 16. Then the man in whom the evil spirit leaped on them, subdued them, all of them, and overpowered them, so that they, they ran out of that house. And the demon whooped their behind. That's what really happened. Listen, you can't play with God. You'll get your, you, you'll be on the shame show. Let me put it that way. Them, them demons, are, that, listen, the demons going to put a lot of fake Christians on the shame show. You better get it right. Amen. He says, listen, uh, they leaped on them, subdued all of them, overpowered them, so that, so that they ran out of the house in terror, stripped naked and, and wounded. They tore their clothes off of them. I know it ain't funny, but it is funny. Amen. Verse 17. 
This became known to all who lived in Ephesus. Everybody heard about it, amen. Every, you know, everybody heard what happened, how the demon jumped on these people. But guess what? Watch God get some glory out of it. So everybody heard, both Jews and Greeks. And fear or reverence fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified and exalted because they could see that there was a difference between what Jesus had done, what Paul was doing, and these exorcists who were doing it in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. So what am I saying? You have to rightly divide the word. You have to have a personal relationship with the Lord. You can't just know about him. You have to know him. Amen. Verse 18 says, and many of those who had become believers were coming, confessing, and disclosing their former sinful practices. And get this, and many of those who had practiced magical arts collected their books and throwing them after book on the pile began burning them in front of everyone. What, you know what this is? Witches and warlock, warlocks got saved because of the reverence that Jesus had got because they saw and, and, and the fake exorcists, the fake Christians, the ones who try to do stuff in the name of God but don't know them, they got exposed. Great fear came on the church, great reverence, and then the witches and warlocks got saved. I just prophesied that witches and warlocks are going to get saved when the church rises up and we do the signs and wonders. We're going to be like Paul, handkerchiefs from our body. Amen. When we lay hands on the sick, when we live right, then the witches and warlocks are going to want what we want. See, it was witches and warlocks. They, had, they were practicing magical arts. Who does that? Witches and warlocks. Hallelujah. So they collected their books, throwing them book after book on the pile, began burning them in front of everyone. They calculated their value and found it to be about 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ was growing greatly and prevailing. And that's what's going to happen in these last days. There's going to be, in the Old Testament says, uh, there's going to be a distinction between what's holy and what's not holy, what's profane and what's sacred. That's why you can't be hot between two opinions. You have to, you know, you better jump on, the, you better jump on God's side. Okay, Acts chapter 8, starting with verse 9. I'm in the Amplified Classic now. Hallelujah. It says in verse 9, but there was a man named Simon who had formerly practiced magical arts. He was a warlock. Magical arts means that he was doing things from the dark side, but is not authorized from God, so he is wrong. So formerly practiced magical arts in the city to the utter amazement of the Samaritan nations, claiming that he himself was an extraordinary and distinguished person. That's what he felt about himself. Verse 10 says, They all paid earnest attention to him, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is that exhibition of the power of God, which is called great or intense. See, they, they thought he was from God because he could do stuff. He could, do, he, he could dazzle people. Let me just go on and say, uh, verse 11, And they were attentive and made much of him, because for a long time he had amazed, bewildered, and dazzled them with his skill in magical arts. Listen, there's preachers like that. I know preachers that can preach, man. I'm telling you, they'll dazzle you with their oratorical skills, but they're not authorized from God. They're false preachers and false prophets. And the only way you can tell is not by them being able to bedazzle you and bewilder you by their oratorical skills or, or their magic arts, but by the Holy Ghost saying, hey, something ain't right about this. But you're only going to have that knower when you know him and know the word. And once again, knowing the word is knowing Jesus. Hallelujah. But get this, verse 12. But the rest of the story. 
But when they believed the good news or the gospel about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ the Messiah, as Philip preached it, see, see, the real Satan came, Philip preached it. And what happened? They were baptized, both men and women. The whole, see, all we have to do is put the truth out there and the Holy Ghost will distinguish what's good and what's bad. See, if we, if, we, if we get this word, start believing it, meditating on it, confessing, the Holy Spirit will give us that check. And these people say, hey, we, we ain't hanging out. Simon, don't, he doesn't phase us anymore. Philip is the new guy in town. Philip represents the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Verse 13 says, even Simon himself believed. Did you get that? Here comes another warlock. Getting saved, amen, because the power of God was being manifested. The truth will make you free. Even Simon himself believed. See, when we preach the word and we speak with a conviction, the warlocks and the witches want to get saved because they really don't want to go to hell. They really don't, now, even though they have power, they know something's not right. And some of them are going to be stubborn until the end of the age. But we have to speak it with conviction. And the only way we're going to have it to be able to speak with conviction that we're going to have to know this word. And we're going to have to rightly divide it. Amen. Even verse 13 says, in Acts chapter 9, verse 13, even Simon himself believed, which means he adhered to, he trusted in, and relied on the teaching of Philip. He submitted himself to what Philip was saying. And that's what you and I have to do. You know, we, we've had mentors that weren't in God, but when we got saved, we, you know, we pushed them to the side and we submitted ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And, and, and Simon did it through Philip. And after being baptized, devoted himself constantly to him. And seeing signs and miracles of great power which were being performed, he was utterly amazed. Simon saw Philip do something. He said, man, he got the real deal. But get this about Simon. He was saved but not delivered. You have to be brought out, cleaned out, and filled up with the Holy Ghost. See, he had been brought out, but he hadn't been totally cleaned out, and he certainly hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. He had the first part, but we need the other two parts. See, you have to be brought out, then you have to be cleaned out, then you have to be filled up, <laughs> amen? You know, there's a, you know, things run in threes, hallelujah. Verse 14 says, Now when the apostles or the special messengers at Jerusalem heard that the country of Samaria had accepted and welcomed the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And they came down and prayed for them that the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not fallen upon any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then the apostles laid their hands on them one by one, and they received the Holy Spirit. However, when Simon saw the Holy Spirit was imparted through the laying on the hands of the apostles, he brought money and offered it to him. Listen, there's still people that buy positions in churches today. Did you get that? There's still people that get favor who don't live right because they have money. And we have to be careful about filthy lucre, allowing people to live any kind of lifestyle because they want to buy a position in church. All right, now I'm just, I'm just telling you. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 19 says, uh, Simon says, grant me this power and authority. See, as a saint, we just don't want to show off in front of people. I want power and authority. No, we want to be submissive in the servant and be blessed so that we can be a blessing to uh, going somewhere to happen. We don't need everybody to look on us. See, that's what he was used to. Remember, we read the whole town looked upon him 
and, and, and said he was a man from God. So he still wanted that fame. And that's why, you know, over the years I've seen people who have got, who in the entertainment world got saved and they put him on TV in or put him on some day show. And then next thing you know, they back out in the world because they, they was brought out, but they wasn't cleaned out and they weren't totally filled with the Holy Ghost. So we have, to, you know, the Bible says don't put a novice in a leadership position because they're not ready for it. So this guy wasn't ready. So he says in verse 19, grant me this power and authority in order that anyone of whom I place my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit because he wanted to be somebody. But Peter said to him, see, once again, we got the right guy and we got the wrong guy. And, you know, Peter was bold. Peter was bold when he was one <laughs> totally converted. Amen. Peter cut your ear off in the minute. You come mess with Jesus. But at the same time, he <laughs> denied him three times. But, you know, Peter was a bold dude. But Peter said to him in verse 20, destruction overtake you and your money. And that's to get you and your money out of here. Because you imagine you could obtain the free gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter. Why? Because your heart is all wrong. See, in order to get our heart right, not only do we have to be brought out, we have to be cleaned out, and then we have to have new desires placed in our heart. So Peter was telling him, you know what? Your heart's wrong. He says it's, it's wrong in God's sight. It is not straightforward or right or true before God. Man, that sounds like a lot of church folks today. Not just church folks, leaders. They just crooked. They just crooked. Amen. But Peter, being full of the Holy Ghost, gives him an out. Verse 22, he says, So repent of this depravity and wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, this contriving thought and purpose of your heart may be removed and disregarded and forgiven you. So when we find out, you know, when we read the word, the word will expose us. You know, prayer exposes you. And hopefully when it exposes you, you will repent. So this is what happened to Simon. His true heart got exposed. And, and Peter says, hey, you're going to ask that. You're going to have to repent and ask God to help you and forgive you. Amen. And then he says in verse 23, For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in a bond of forged by iniquity to fetter souls. And Simon answered, Pray for me. Beseech the Lord, both of you, that nothing of what you have said may befall me. So I'm about to close out with this. But we're going to find out in these last and evil days that there's going to be people coming in the name of Christ and the only way that we're not going to fall prey to their giftings, because they're going to have giftings. That's what the Bible just says. They're going to, uh, they're going to be able to bedazzle you with, with their giftings. But you have to know by the Holy Spirit and by you feeding your spirit on the word that they're not right with God. Amen. And you're not to follow them. Amen. So let me pray for you before I bring Pastor James back. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that are watching the broadcast today, that you will give them a hunger and thirst to get into your word. Make them a workman who need them and never to be ashamed because they're going to rightly divide the word of truth. They'll never be deceived in Jesus' name. They're going to be blessed so that they can be a blessing to their family, to their community, and everywhere they go. We decree it, declare it in Jesus' name. We're going to see witches and warlocks come to the Lord in this hour. Amen, 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 because we're walking uprightly before the Lord. Here's Pastor James coming. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I told you it was powerful. <laughs> I'm telling you, witches and warlocks, those who operate in witchcraft, they're going to give their life to Christ because they're going to see real signs and wonders. And when we throw our rod down, it's going to eat up their rod. 
Hallelujah. That's dealing with Moses for those who don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> one of the signs and wonders Moses operated in. Hallelujah. If you were blessed, if you were blessed by this amazing teaching, I want you guys to sow a seed. Um, right down below, it shows a few different ways you can do so. You can do so through Cash App, through um, Text to Give. You can also do so through PayPal or even send it to the church. We're going to put that up after the broadcast, but I'm telling you, man, this was a powerful message. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want you guys to sow. Hallelujah. Rightly dividing the word. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Also, we're going to bring back the dream interpretations uh, very soon. Um, I've just been like overwhelmed and very, very busy. Me kind of tired, but I know God has given me some a, a, a great break that's so needed soon. And so we're going to see a lot of uh, different upgrades with the ministry and stuff. We're going to try to do a lot of different things. Um, follow us on YouTube. Um, we are putting pro uh, we're going to try to put things on there every day. And our um, our YouTube name is Faith Covenant Fellowship. You, we already have a few messages up on there. Uh, share the broadcast on there as well and even like it. Have your friends like it. Have your family like it. And I'm going to be posting that on the group uh, in the, the Facebook wall as well so that you can like that. And uh, we're trying to grow that as well. So we're going to start going live on there, too. Amen. And so we're just getting all that stuff upgraded. Like um, like I was saying earlier, everything in the church, we're upgrading it and making it um, uh, social distancing, you know, all that good stuff. And we're very excited to go back into the building very soon. So I want you guys to keep praying for that. Um, we've got a few more things to do, and we are back in there, and we're going to experience the glory of God together very soon. And so I'm personally very excited about that. Dr. Jane, Dr. Edie, all of us are very excited about that. Um, and so, and so, yeah, um, we know God is about to do some amazing things. And I don't want anyone to be fearful of persecution or things that seem chaotic because that's the, the perfect atmosphere for miracles to be birthed. Amen. Miracles are not birthed out of um, peace. They're birthed out of chaos. They're birthed out of things that are that are crazy looking. Amen. God wants to show you his might. Why do you think he hardened Pharaoh's heart? Because there was more miracles. There needed to be more darkness so that more light can shine. Amen. And so I'm telling you, God is God is in control of everything and all the things that are going to take place. It's just going to birth something so beautiful. So I want you guys to stay in that prayer closet. Continue to pray. Continue to repent. Continue to fast. Continue to sow. Continue to grow. Amen. Apply. This is a season of application. There could have been seasons in the past where you didn't apply everything that you learned and you got away with it in some way, shape or form. This is not that season. It's time to take off, dust off those notebooks, all those uh, those notes and all those things God has spoken to you and apply them to your life. It's a season of addition and multiplication. You need to add the revelations to your life so he can multiply who you are. Amen. And so I'm telling you, God is about to do some amazing things and I want you guys to be excited about it. So every day. This is your homework assignment. Every day I want you to jump up out of the bed and say, Lord, I expect the great today. Amen. So that means whatever happens, just know God is going to throw some great on it as well. Amen. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the chat room. Expect the great. Expect the great. I want you to expect the great every morning. Hop up. I know Smith Wigglesworth, every morning he'll get up here, jump up and, and sing praises to the Lord. I forget for how long, but it was for a little length of time. And so he did that every day. I'm telling you, if you if you get up every day and you command, you command your morning, you command your body, you command your mind to love the Lord and give him praise. I'm telling you, you will see a residual and you will see that you will see that one moment affect your entire day. And you will see God move like you've never seen him before. And you will see it consistency consistently. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want you guys to sow a seed. Glory to God. I want you guys to share this broadcast. And I want you guys to know that you have the victory and there's nothing you can do about it if you stay in God's obedient protection. Amen. So, Dr. J, Dr. Edie, they love you so much. Me, my wonderful wife and my son, we love you as well. He's not here. Well, he was here earlier, but he's not here now. We'll put him on the camera. But we're just excited. This is a beautiful season. God has released a blessing from Yom Kippur. We're in a new year, a new era, a new dimension. I'm telling you, God's releasing covenant things and promises. 
All you got to do is receive them and believe and be unmovable. Amen. So we love you so much. I'm very excited. Hope to see you guys very soon. Until next time, God bless you.